Welcome to the May episode of In the World of Winooski. I am your host, Mayor Christine Lott, and today I have two guests joining me. Um, with us from the Burlington International Airport are Nick Longo, Deputy Director of Aviation Administration, and Diane Carter of the Join Jones Payne Group. Um, they are here to share information with us about the newly released updated noise exposure map for the Burlington International Airport. Um, ahead of a public meeting that will occur tomorrow at the airport and another one that will occur on Thursday right in Winooski at the O'Brien Center. So I'd like to say welcome to you, Nick and Diane. I uh, really appreciate you joining us today to inform us of this complicated, um, long, long-term process um, that residents in Winooski are looking forward to hearing about. Um, I think it would be good to start with just some background and basics on what is the noise exposure map? Why is it being updated? What is this bigger process that we are, we are looking at here? Well, thank you very much, Mayor, for having us on board. I, I think it is important because, as you mentioned, of the complexities behind this program. And we want to make it as simple as possible so that, that you, as a homeowner within Winooski or any of the municipalities surrounding the airport, understand what the noise exposure map means, why the airport moves down that path, but then the second half of the program is, if I'm in that program as a homeowner, what are the next steps for me and what are the programs behind that? Um, I think we're gonna, we have some uh, slides for you today to, to kind of go through that. And these are gonna be available at both public meetings uh, in a poster board, as well as live on our website, btvsound.com, so your residents can, can directly access them. Uh, what you're looking at here is, is really the overall schedule of our noise exposure map. Uh, that yellow square there is, is just about where we are in the overall process. And that is the, the draft noise exposure map document uh, for you, the audience's review and public comment. Uh, today it's, it is on our website, btvsound.com, and you can access the full document as well as the noise exposure map pictures, uh, the map itself, for, uh, rather. So what happens here is, is we have to uh, open this public comment period and for approximately 30 days. Um, and we uh, receive comments both from you as a municipality and, and leadership of that municipality, as well as the general public on the actual document and the maps themselves. Uh, we'll compile that, we'll answer some of those questions, and then what we do is submit that to the Federal Aviation Administration or the FAA for their review and they accept those maps. Uh, really the next step after that comes uh, what happens with the map and what happens within the area of the map. Uh, I think the, the next slide really goes into the overall perspective and Diane will, will walk us through uh, what is a Part 150 study. Yeah, thanks Nick. So a Part 150 study is a federally funded program that allows communities to make land use planning decisions. It identifies noise exposure from aircraft noise and then it puts together a program of how to mitigate that noise once it's been identified. It's a two-step process that starts with the noise exposure map itself, which is a technical document that depicts the noise in a graphical format. And that's where we're at today. We've finished up the map. It's here for everyone to see. And then we'll go into the noise mitigation planning process later this summer. And as I said, it's, it, it, the noise exposure map is uh, two maps, actually. It's the current year, which is 2018, and then a five-year forecast, which will be 2023. And in terms of looking at uh, noise mitigation areas, we'll be looking at the 2023 map as the affected area. So what is a noise contour? This is the lines that go around the map that explain what the noise level is. It's an average annual day that is uh, compassing all of the aircraft operations, both general aviation, uh, military, and commercial. And there's a 10 decibel penalty for nighttime operations from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. That counts the equivalent of 10 aircraft for every departure after 10 p.m. or every arrival after 10 p.m. until 7 a.m. in the morning. 
This is the metric that the FAA requires us to use. It's used by all the airports across the country. And so it, it, it's a way for everybody to look at the noise in the same type of way. So it's an average of the noise that you're hearing throughout the day. You know, there's going to be peaks and quiet times. Correct. Um, and then you said in the nighttime, there's sort of a penalty to recognize that. That's more disturbing than the same level of noise in the daytime. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And a, a good way to picture it for DNL is if you turn on your faucet and you put a bucket under your, your faucet all day long for a year, at the end of the year, whatever water you had in that bucket, you divided it by 365 glasses, mm -hmm. that would be the noise contour, that would be the average. So some days you do more dishes, some days you do less, it's that same type of principle. Okay. So the noise compatibility program is the piece of it that looks at people who are within that noise contour and it determines what programs can be offered to help mitigate that noise. It could be things like sound insulation or assistance with sale of a home and we'll be talking more about that a little bit later. Uh, and Mayor, this is probably the more important piece of this project. While the map defines those areas, those geographic areas that may be eligible for one of these programs, the noise compatibility program is the document that details what each program is. And as Diana and I talk about all the time, we want a toolbox that has many tools in it so that as a homeowner, you have these tools that you can choose from that best fits your property or your unique circumstance. And that's what a noise compatibility program really details. What works for you? Is it sound insulation or is it one of the other programs that we'll go uh, through in just a moment? And, and that's why it's so important that one, the, the maps are, are produced, but two, what do we do within those contour areas, whether it's for Winooski, South Burlington, or Williston? Yeah, so we're gonna see this map that's gonna tell us who would qualify for noise compatibility programming um, and then after that is determined, we move into the stage of actually sorting out what that program is, people being able to apply, um, which I think we'll talk about a little bit further, further out in this program. Right. Yeah, yeah, the map is a means to get federal funding. So first you have to identify it, then it allows the airport to apply for the funds to do the mitigation. So some of the potential uh, land use measures is sound insulation. I think this is something that we see a lot of interest in from the communities around the airport. It's uh, when the airport will come in, they'll do a, a test of the home to determine the interior noise level, and then they'll install new windows and doors that are acoustically made to reduce your interior noise level. Can't do anything about the outside or your backyard, but we can always make it quieter when you're in the house and you don't have to turn up your TV or ask someone to hold on while you're on the phone. Um, it also could include ventilation uh, in terms of fresh air or um, central air conditioning if you don't have it. It may include attic insulation or some other types of treatments to make sure we can reduce that interior noise level. It's a long process um, from the initial time we come to a house to do the initial assessment until the construction happens. It's about a 12 to 18 month process because it depends on grant cycles with the FAA. But the actual construction on the house takes about 30 days. So it's 10 days from start to finish to get 90% of everything in, everything operational, and then another 20 days to do all the inspections, close the permits, tidy up all the work, and make sure that everything's working. Um, and, and we find this to be a very um, positive program. Homeowners like it. It adds a lot of value to their home. It's no cost to them. All of those costs are paid by the airport and by the grant. So it improves their home without there being an, a financial impact to homeowners for sound insulation. The other two programs that we're looking at are sales assistance. Um, all of these programs, I should say, are developed to keep the homes uh, residential, keep the area residential. The airport is not looking to do any more purchasing of uh, properties and uh, tearing them down and clearing the land. So we're wanting to keep the neighborhoods, keep the communities intact. And so sales assistance allow people who want to relocate the ability to do so um, and the house stays in the neighborhood. The homeowner sells their home on the open market 
to a third party and if there is not an offer that is equivalent to the appraised value, then the airport would make up that difference. The other option that we look at is purchase assurance and that is where the airport will just come in and buy the home at the appraised value and then sound insulate it and resell it on the market. So it always remains residential and keeps that neighborhood intact. I think you make an important point there about a community value that we have. Um, you know, Winooski in the area has a lot of more affordable housing than some of the surrounding county. And so it's really important to us that we have these options to keep people in their homes, keep that housing stock available, that we're not looking at a situation where we'd be demolishing any homes. Right. And, and, it, yeah, sorry. and we were very adamant with uh, you and your staff, as well as the other municipalities staff uh, and leadership to, to stop that acquisition program. We heard loud and clear from municipal leadership uh, from, from Burlington and Winooski, Williston, South Burlington, that that no longer was a viable option moving into the, into the future. Uh, that program has ended. Uh, we, like Diane was saying, we no longer will be purchasing any more houses for the removal of the building and, and start offering some of these programs. And it's important to note too that these programs were and have been discussed over the last year, uh, about a year, uh, as part of the airport's technical advisory committee for this noise compatibility program. A lot of acronyms out there, but uh, you know, the, the, the technical advisory committee is, is made up of uh, municipal leadership that really have uh, stakeholders and community members and residents and uh, within these areas that truly are um, part of this project with us. So that's why it's so, so important that we did have these discussions and we'll continue to have these discussions on what best fits the community and and keeping and remaining this affordable housing stock into the future. And our own city manager has a seat in that committee to help advocate for Winooski and, and what we would like to see. Absolutely. Yep. So, you, you know, when we talk about the history of the Part 150 program, it's been at the airport for quite a long time. In fact, all, all the way uh, when the Part 150 started with the FAA back in the 80s. Uh, the airport's first initiative with the Part 150 program was really uh, back in 2008 uh, when we completed our, uh, one of the first noise compatibility programs. That's the program that defined purchasing and removal of the house. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're updating that program. That's why this new noise compatibility program is being edited now and will be submitted later in 2019 to adjust for the programs that we just mentioned, the sales assistance, purchase assurance, and sound insulation. Uh, in 2015, just a few years ago, we did produce our last noise exposure map. Uh, that map is available for, for viewing, and in fact, it's available within this new document that we have, just so folks can compare what it used to look like in mm -hmm. 2015 with the new maps defined this year and the future for forecast for 2023. Uh, uh, like, like I said, we have been working on the NCP updates for some time. We anticipate that we submit those NCP updates to the FAA later in 2019, as well as our noise exposure map, which is defined right there. That picture on the right-hand side is, is probably tough for, for viewers to see, but that is available at btvsound.com. That is part of the overall noise exposure map documentation right there on the homepage of btvsound.com. And that, what that does is it details the estimated uh, residential population as well as the dwelling units within each community and within each contour area. Mm -hmm. So we talk a lot about noise and sound with, um, with airports and we wanted to just familiarize people with terminology of acoustics and sound is measured in decibels. We use an A weighted decibel. There are different types of ways to measure noise, whether it's low frequency, but we use A weighted, which is most uh, like a, what a human hearing would be. So that's our, our basis measurement and then a, a, a Decibel can be in a, a variety of measurements, whether it's a single event or the loudest po point of something. 
the last point of an event or a series of aircraft overflights. But the main uh, measurement we use for the Part 150 is the day-night sound level. As we talked about earlier, it's this annual average with this 10 dB penalty. And so uh, one thing to know about acoustics is it's logarithmic. It's not uh, linear addition. So if you're adding you know, two flights together, it doesn't make it doubly loud. Um, there's, a, there's a larger technical way that noise is measured. And there's a lot of detail about that for those who are interested in acoustics and the noise exposure map. In, in the overall document uh, online, we do get into some of the details and finer tuned uh, technicalities of how this is produced, uh, but it, it can be very technical indeed and, and uh, difficult for even us as the airport to define these terms uh, to put into the noise map. So like Diane said, if you're interested, it's, it's available online, uh, but overall it's defined in, in a way that we all can understand it a little bit better. And would it also be fair to say that the way this is measured, the way this program rolls out, um, it follows policy of the Federal Aviation Administration. So there are rules in place, there are things that we have to abide by that are guided by the FAA. Um, and when we get to the point of the noise compatibility program after you know the initial stages are set up, that that is then administered by the airport itself. Yeah, that, that is a fair point. It, 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 in fact, you know, many people, one of the frequently asked questions we receive is, why don't you physically measure the noise mm -hmm. with microphones outside the airport? Uh, and the simple answer is that FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, does not allow that to be put into a noise exposure map so that we can access grant mm -hmm. funding. Mm -hmm. And that's the most vital piece there is, we have to follow, of course, like many uh, grantees and, and municipalities, have to follow the federal procurement and federal requirements of this program mm -hmm. so that later down the road, we can access that federal funding. And then yes, once that, that all of these items, the noise exposure map and the noise compatibility program, these two documents are approved by the FAA, then that would be administered by the, the Burlington Airport with Communication, constant communication mm -hmm. uh, with you uh, and other municipalities that are within this 65 DNO. Again, we're showing here some different types of sound levels so people can compare um, what a, a loud urban environment is versus a suburban environment and showing how a DNL is constant over time and that how there's a penalty at night which raises those noise levels to account for the people who are disturbed more in the middle of the night when they're sleeping. The FIA recognizes the human side of all of this, so it's important people understand that. So land use compatibility, as we chatted about a little earlier, comes through the, the uh, federal regulations. And it's, while we've mainly talked about residential use, it also involves public use, so it isn't for uh, buildings that are churches or schools or daycare centers or, or hospitals, those are also things that are identified as potentially not compatible with the noise environment when you're above the 65 DNL noise contour. So all of those types of sensitive receptors we've looked at and that's in the document. And um, there are some exceptions to different noise levels if you're in the 75 or higher, which is the the highest level we're measuring, that's incompatible for any land uses in terms of residential or public sensitive receptors. And so that's why previously the airport has been purchasing properties. Mm -hmm. Now that is mainly on the airport, so we don't see a lot of uh, need for purchasing homes because everything is in the 70 and below. And so that gives us the more flexibility for sound insulation or purchase assistance or sales assistance. Um, so the next slide is, is going to be the, the actual maps themselves, but I think it's important for the viewers to understand kind of the, the steps uh, once again. Where we are today, which is of course publishing this noise exposure map. This will be, today in fact, will be the first day that it's published and open for uh, public comment for the next 30 days, which you can access on btvsound.com and there's a little comment section on, on the left hand side of the screen there. Once that's completed, we'll compile all of that information, answer many of those questions, 
and respond to those questions uh, on our website again and then submit that to the FAA for their review and for their acceptance. Once that's completed, we're going to reconvene the Technical Advisory Committee to confirm those land use measures that we talked about, the sound insulation, purchase assurance, and sales assistance programs. Uh, that, that confirmation would then detail within our actual noise compatibility document so that we can publish that as well and accept additional public comment uh, from, from you as a viewer and from, from your constituents in uh, uh, Winooski and of course South Burlington, Williston and the surrounding area. Uh, that document, the noise compatibility document, then gets submitted to the FAA later in 2019 so that they can review it. They actually review each individual sound measure and approve or deny those sound measures. We, of course, are hopeful that they'll approve all of them because they really, truly do make sense in this area. And we've worked really hard with our neighbors, including yourselves, to make sure that it fits with, with the area and with Vermonters and with who we truly are. Uh, the FAA takes about 180 days, or they can take up to 180 days to review and approve those items. Once they do approve it, then we can access grant funding. So, so at the earliest, by summer of next year, we'll have that approval so that into late next year and late into 2020 and then really into 2021, we can access federal funding to start implementation of each one of those programs. Um, and I think, I think now is, is a good time to show the map and kind of sure. review, uh, if, if that's what you wish, uh, to, to review uh, the, the, the map in its entirety. So here you're, you're looking at really a, a zoomed in uh, area of just Winooski, uh, of course, tailoring to, to your viewers. Um, you can see at the bottom right hand corner of the map, uh, the, the end of one of the runways at the Burlington area. Uh, you can see uh, the, the Winooski downtown as a whole in the top left hand corner, I-89 kind, kind of going right through the middle of the screen there. Um, and so this, this red line that, you, that you're viewing on the outside edges shows the 65 decibel DNL line. So that's that average line that Diane was describing. And that area right there, that outside red line, is the initial eligibility for one of those programs. Again, the map has to be accepted by FAA, and those programs have to be approved by the FAA in, until, we, in, in, until we can move forward with, with uh, accessing grant funding. Uh, so this really is the, the, the map for Winooski. Uh, this details additionally some additional lines in there of the 75, the 70, and like I said, the outside edges, which is the 65 uh, dB DNL line. I'll pause there just for a second, just in case we have uh, questions or in case I can remember anything additional to add. <laughs> I, I would say that uh, on the BTV Sound website, there is an eligibility map. When you go to that home page, you'll see on the left-hand side eligibility map. If you click on that, you can add, enter your address and it will show your home compared to these noise contours so you'll know where you fall within the noise levels if you're within the project area or outside of the mitigation area but that's helpful that came up tonight as well yeah that's great too um, I mean when I I've seen this map it's a significant portion of Winooski that is impacted in that 65 range um, it's hard to tell for those who are kind of on the edge whether or not they would fall into it so being able mm -hmm. to search your, your own property is important. Um, I think for folks who want to know more, there is the website. We have the meeting you're, that you're hosting at the airport tomorrow Correct. Um, from five to seven. Then again, we're doing it at the O'Brien Center. So we have the airport staff actually coming to us in Winooski to bring this information, bring some um, blown up maps, yeah. Yeah. Um, more zoomed in on, on Winooski. So homeowners who are interested can come and learn more. Um, what would you say is the kind of the next step if I'm a, a property owner in Winooski and I'm concerned about this? Um, you know, what is the, what is my part of the public process here? As, as a homeowner, I, I think uh, your involvement as a homeowner on, on reviewing the maps, reviewing the documentation behind this, uh, the next step, like I said, is completing the documentation for the noise compatibility program. 
as a homeowner, homeowner that's vital to review as well and to talk to your, your town leadership or uh, respond to btvsound.com, the comment section to uh, really uh, um, either uh, submit questions or comments regarding what those programs entail. Uh, certainly the airport is always available as I, as I assume uh, the city of Winooski would be as well. Um, and really be engaged with, with what, this, what this entails because uh, once those programs are approved and within that documentation, uh, you know, we, we will be moving forward with the FAA and with the grant funding and with the communities on accessing those funds and really implementing those programs directly. And, and we'll work uh, geographically and physically as close to the airport as we can as the FAA allows us to do and work our way outward from that point. So it, it may take some time for the citizens of Winooski to, to access that grant funding, th you know, working through the airport. Um, so that, that, I think that's important to, to stay engaged, to, to read those documentations. Uh, of course, if there's questions, always respond on the, on the website or directly to the airport or the city and uh, um, really get engaged with what those programs are and how you can stay involved in accessing grant funding in future years. And I would say to, to viewers, to residents, that we as a city are working with the airport. Um, we want to hear from you. They want to hear from you as this noise compatibility program is kind of fleshed out and finalized. Um, whatever we hear, we're going to take that information and bring it to, to advocate on behalf of our residents um, for what they want to see in, in the program. Um, we can also direct folks to the airport, um, you know, once, once we move into the actual funding and program, the, the airport is really running that process, but we will be in contact. We can also help connect folks. Um, and then I think the other thing to, to take away is that as you explain through this process of approval, you know, it's going to be next year before the funding application, probably another year before the, any sort of construction actually mm -hmm. begins. So it's a slow process that we have to keep working through. Correct. Yeah, and it's and it's never ending too. Let's let's put it that way, because even when our technical advisory committee uh, is disbanded, because that's really focused on just the noise compatibility program. So once that's complete, of course, we'll disband mm -hmm. the the technical folks. But then we'll continue continuously a sound mitigation committee, and that still has. Uh, your town manager Jesse Baker on it, who who you and your staff have been wonderful to work with, and and really important in this whole engagement of this process. So so that sound mitigation committee is really a rolling committee that we can always tweak and comment and uh, make sure we're moving in the direct uh, in in the line and, and path that we all want to move forward to in accessing and, and investing into the community with some of these programs. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a constant communication um, between residents, the city, th the other cities that are impacted, South Burlington, Wilson. Um, and so we will continue to, to work with you all um, and get to a place where we can roll this out for folks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that parking at the airport tomorrow, you can get a voucher, so it, it'll be free when you leave, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's plenty of free parking at the O'Brien Center for the Thursday event, and translation is also available if you reach out to city staff. Um, we have um, some service in place for that if there are folks who need that to, in order to attend. Um, looks like we have about two minutes left. Any are there any final thoughts or final bits of information you want to share? No, I, th I think this this kind of sums it up and, and brings us to these these two meetings that we're holding. And I, I think maybe it would be beneficial for the viewer to understand that that the meeting is really an open meeting from five to seven p.m. So there is no formal presentation. So if you don't if you can't make it at five o'clock p.m., that's okay because there's going to be plenty of opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one time with Diane and her team, with the airport team as well. The FAA will be available to answer any questions at that meeting as well. Um, and it's really just a, a rotation of stations that you can not only understand what these programs, as we just discussed, what they mean and how they came to be and what the background is on that, but also um, 
you know, those zoomed in maps so you can pinpoint yeah. exactly where you live and get the answers to your unique property and your unique home that you may, may need in the future. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for, for ho coming to the show tonight, hosting the meeting, coming to Winooski to do that as well. Um, and, and I've also heard repeatedly from the airport that they are available to speak one-on-one -on -one with anyone who has questions as well. Absolutely.